is a new release. I'm going to go back here and um, oh, to the, the Google groups and Yeah, so there was a new stable release that was published a few days ago. Um, and according to Vadim, this release should have all the necessary fixes to install upgrade on vSphere. Um, and this was just happened on the 12th. So if you haven't tested it yet, um, I'm not holding you accountable because today is um, just a few days after that. And I think that was a weekend. So um, a weekend release. But I think we have, um, have fixed the problem, Gudrun, that you might have um, done. So it might be worth um, trying again. Um, and there was one other note here. I have to fix the issue I had in uh, both you. And then I'll do a. Uh, um, the only kind of new outstanding issue is uh, or take a little. Uh, so I'm going to say. Um, at least on the upgrade side. John, uh, but you. But the installation issues seem to be fine. So, John, I'm, you. I'm going to switch computers. Yeah, I would ask if you could. That would be great. Um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch computers because I'm not sure what's going on here. Hold on. I'll dial back in. Yeah. The internet's not been great today um, for some, a few people, so um, it's it's not happy. It wants to go on vacation. There's Vadim. Hey, Vadim. Hello. Um, before you Hello, start Vadim. talking, we're going to let John Fortin reboot his machine and come in on another machine. But um, Goodwin, can you tell us a little bit about your um, configuration on vSphere? We've heard from um, Bruce and John previously, so I know. So my, my setup is... Uh, user-provided infrastructure, and it's um, all in one uh, VLAN behind an F5 load balancer on vSphere and NetApp um, Trident as a storage backend. Okay. See that Valid has just um, joined us too. So, um, hey, Valid, I've unmuted everybody. Um, Hi, hi everyone. You, you should be on. Um, you should be able to unmute and turn your video on if you are, if you so desire. Um, we're just getting started. We have one person who had to reboot, um, and he he should be back shortly. Walid, can you tell us? Um, you, I know Walid did the um, the vSphere OKD deployment demo a while back, um, and. Do you have, uh, are you running OKD in production or as a POC somewhere, Walid? And can you tell us a little bit about your um, vSphere um, deployment? We are running OpenShift on, on vSphere at work, and I wanted to run OKD on test environment. Uh, however, uh, one of the supervisors doesn't want to yet. So we are actually running uh, just OpenShift on the uh, Production. Uh, so the vSphere on OKD environment is on uh, on a, on a on a home server on a Dell R620. Uh, other than that, uh, I didn't manage to get it uh, to get it approved at work yet. Okay. No, and that that's all right. And here comes John Fortin back in. And John, let's try and see if we can hear you again. Yeah. How's that? Not so much better. So, John. Yeah, um, something's going on with my computer, my regular one. So, okay, I'm on my laptop. Perfect. Um, so, John, we've just gone around around the table here. Um, if you could tell us at Market America what your um, OKD deployment looks like today on vSphere. So, uh, in regards to the 4.5, 4.6, or in general? Mm -hmm. In general, so um, we're running 3.10 and 3.11 in production, but we're looking at, you know, 4.5, 4.6, you know, 4.x and, you know, to migrate first quarter. Uh, so did a successful 4.5 install, you know, a couple of glitches that Vadim helped me through, but uh, the 4.6 um, was problematic. Um, and over the last couple of weeks, uh, I think we fixed all of those. I did successful upgrades and fresh installs over the weekend with the new release from Dadder. 
day? Was that the 12th? 12th, uh, whatever, the, whatever day the 12th was. Um, and that was, that was really successful. The only issue, and I, and I hesitate to call it an issue um, because I, I don't know the cause, um, actually two issues. One is uh, VMs not turning on by themselves, but that just turn them on. We don't know if that's a infrastructure issue on my end or if there's something else going on and we're sort of discussing that. Uh, but also the network stack seems to get really busy um, after a four or five to four six install. Um, but other than that, uh, everything I've seen so far has been very, uh, very clean. And I see that Jamie just, just joined us from UMich. Um, and so Jamie, I'm gonna put you on the spot if you can unmute yourself. Um, we're making everybody go around and talk at, through what their vSphere OKD deployment looks like at the moment. So if you're... Sure, so I am at the moment uh, in the process of just about to rebuild my 4.6 with the latest release that came out the other day. I have not yet. Um, and uh, basically I got burned by the host name issue last time I attempted to build, so I had an incomplete build. So my goal this time will be a complete build. Awesome. Awesome, so um, thanks. And, and that, that got us up to speed, I think, on, on where everybody's at. Um, Vadim, if, I, I think Gudrun is, I, and I haven't seen Gudrun on this call before, but if um, Vadim, if you could give an update on the, the latest release and what that issue was in case she's seen that, and um, then maybe we can, and I'll let Mike run, run a round table and we could talk about other issues you might have or wish listening and feedback. Uh, sure. So when we first released like the D46, there's been a bunch of uh, changes introduced by Fedora 33 content. Um, most of them have been related to DNS resolution. However, by now, all the issues I think have been fixed, so you can now successfully install and upgrade, as John has mentioned today. Uh, there has been quite a lot of changes in for six, though, as well, which is uh, a busy networking from OVN. That's basically a, an open OCP bug. We filed this in Bugzilla we're waiting for network folks to pick it up. Um, another important problem we're hitting right now is that you cannot mirror the Koi images the key images back to your machine. So you cannot do an air gap install. Uh, this is caused by, again, 4.6 upgraded by a 4.6 change, but it has hit us silently when we, when our build farm on CI has been updated to 4.6 as well. So in order to fix that, we need a release which has this bug fixed and also all images for build. Um, it's probably not going to happen in the next couple of weeks because it's uh, quite a lot of effort. So we that's the first thing we will fix in in the new year, unfortunately. Is that but specific? No. Is, is that specific to OKD or is that an OCP, OCP wide issue? It's an OCP wide issue with hits OKD most, but you still can release OCP because uh, internally we rebuild all components using older clusters. So this time they are lucky. Uh, but again, uh, it's a pretty huge issue. It's just gonna take some some time to, to actually get it fixed. Um, another um, medium size, let's say, issue is that um, our cluster signature keys have been timely updated behind our backs. Uh, I have a fix to push it, but the next couple of releases, next two table releases probably would have to be updated without the signature verification. We have steps how to do this manually, but uh, in cluster verification is messed up because it uses official Red Hat keys instead of the OKD specific keys. But uh, these are the largest problem I've seen so far. There are a couple of unexplained problems like OpenShift API server hangs up on upgrade, but we don't have a clear reproducer, and it's also affecting OCP, meaning it would get a bit more attention. 
Um, I think that's all I have for the status. I don't know of any these year specific problems. Uh, John has hit a couple, but we don't we can't reproduce them on our CI, so it's really hard to uh, to find out what's wrong there. So this this meeting is for vSphere people. So um, we wanted to hear from you um, about any issues or feedback or things that you are running into. So um, uh, I would like to um, open open the floor. And um, the only thing that I was thinking, um, since we have Walid here, is is asking the question is the demo that Waleed did um, deploying vSphere um, that we recorded for the OKD deployment marathon, um, does that change drastically um, in any way, shape, or form? In other words, should we redo uh, a deployment video for vSphere um, to help people out? And is it possible to create a vSphere deployment recipe? Um, that that's the the one thing that that I was curious about um, from other folks here. So I have a UPI recipe that's going up. Um, I think I shared it with you last week. It's almost done. It'll be done in the next couple of days. Um, IPI it would probably would be helpful still to have someone do an IPI version of the vSphere install video. So I can do a video and I can do the recipe for UPI, but I think IPI would be helpful as well. And Willie, did you do IPI when when you were deploying? I can't remember. No, I didn't do IBI. Uh, the IBI failed. Uh, the IBI, we couldn't get the IBI working. Okay. Uh, but it, it was the uh, it was the uh, at that time it was just the IBI was just working. So maybe now with 4.6, I need to give it a try. Okay. Well, if, if you can do that um, in the next week or so and give us your feedback, um, I, I promise not to go on holidays until the 20th of um, December here and, um, and post it to the working group. Um, that would be great and that, that, would be, that would be very helpful. And I'm just adding the issues here. I mean, that, for me, that, that's, those, those are the kinds of things that, that I worry about as sort of the community lead here is to make sure that um, the instructions are there. So someone coming in like Goodrun or elsewise um, has, has the tools and the documentation to do what they need to do. Um, and, and maybe um, a blog post or something like that on, on um, this new release. I think now it's safe to do, Vadim, uh, a blog post about the 4.6, or do you, should I still wait until those images are, are ready? Yeah, I think the mirroring and signatures problems are pretty significant. Okay, so wait. I don't mind waiting because basically it's more work for me. Um, so that's I'm fine with that. But I have a I have a couple of questions about the IPI recipe stuff that we just brought up. So like, um, I mean, in general, like the IPI installs are, should be fairly boring. You know, you kind of start the command line and let it go. Um, in terms of creating like a recipe or materials for people, what you know, what 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 is kind of the expectation here? Or do you want to document how vSphere is configured and then you run IPI on top of it, or what what are we kind of looking for there? Well, um, I put that to the group. Is like what is most useful, an IPI generic one or an, uh, a vSphere generic one with IPI layered on top? It's Sorry, I'm a little late. That's okay. Um, that that's that's um that's really up to the group here. I I'm not the arbitrator trader of of what should be in a recipe. Um, I'm not. Well, IPI IPI itself is relatively easy. The the interesting parts are when you set up the config file and if you want to do something like change the default CPU and memory and stuff. And the documentation online is fairly good. Um, but, you know, somebody going through and actually doing that, um, you know, as a video would, you know, would probably be uh, helpful for people that are doing it for the first time. Um, you know, talking about, you know, the DNS requirements, the fact that you have to have, you know, the um, API and the, um, 
the uh, I'm sorry, my mind just went blank. The um, wildcard DNS, you know, for stuff for the ingress, um, you know, talking about a little bit because some people are going to like, I don't know what that means. So I think that would be help, one on, from a general point of view from anybody using you know, SICK or a four dot whatever, um, but or vSphere in particular um, from an IPI side. The user provision stuff is a, it's a whole different animal because there's a lot of different flavors of that. Yeah, and I, you know, I the expectation for UPI I think is really diff. You know, we could make a video about it, but it's going to be different for everybody. I think mm -hmm. you know something like an IPI video, um, and you know, I'm just thinking about this from the issues that we see. Uh, you know, hearing what users are saying and whatnot, like. I think there'd be a lot of value in being able to first lay out what the expectation for an IPI install is, like this is what we expect from vSphere. And mm -hmm. then the second part would kind of get into some of the things that John's talking about, like not just running the installer, but what is the prep work that you need to do before you run the installer? Like, how, you know, how do you set up whatever configuration on the outside allows you to point to your vSphere cluster? Because once, once all that's set up, um, you know, the installer should set up the load balancers for you and everything like every, you know, once you've got it to the cluster, the installer should do all that work for you. Um, so I would think having a good standard set of known good setups for vSphere that people could run IPI on, that, that's a really big first step uh, from where I'm sitting. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think you need to. Uh clearly described the permissions required too, because that was one of the reasons why I didn't do IPI. Uh, like our, you know, like my server is one of a whole bunch, uh, all running vSphere and uh, my admins don't want me to touch it really at that level. Uh, and if I could, you know, if I could have given them a set of, well, these are the permissions I need, then I might've gone that route, although it still might not have succeeded. So sort of UPI yeah, was the only way. That yeah, but those permissions are, are in the documentation exactly what's needed in the in the uh, OKD documentation. It says uh, well, exactly I, what. Yeah, I mean, yeah last, last I looked was in July, uh, and uh, there were some things there, but uh, mm -hmm. it wasn't clear that they were comprehensive. So the permissions Again, it could be mostly... just my, it could be just me. Mm -hmm. The permissions is mostly for the v, uh, for the storage integration, yes, for the vSphere storage integration. Is that correct? Well, then being able to create VMs and all that other kind of stuff, and you know, so you have to have you know particular pieces of, of you know authorization to be able to do that. The easiest is just to have an admin ID, but um, you know, if you right. can get a user that's given all those pieces, it should work. It worked for me, but I don't know if my admins gave me extra stuff. I gave them what I needed, they gave me an ID. Yeah, I mean, basically you need to write to the data store to be able to copy, mm -hmm. like there's a whole series of them and just a simple yep. table, I think, yes, would yes, be yes. helpful to, to show people that, yeah. So my reference for this is usually the uh, VMware like wiki for the vSAN uh, CSI integration. And it has changed since July. Uh, I remember there was another, uh, uh, another colleague had an issue and he asked me how did he do the permissions and when I looked it up it has uh, it has changed since then uh, it's getting easier so basically there was some vagueness before but now it's actually I think it's a little bit easier uh, so I guess yes a video for this is maybe it takes like maybe two or five minutes just how to do the permissions and roles and how to, uh, to bind them together uh, I think I think what um the context of a recipe though is to have the video, but then to also have all of the links, oh, to all, all of all of these things that people are talking about in a, some in the recipe. So that that's I love the videos because they're they're great and they're useful and that's what they're. But if we don't have the the documentation, mm -hmm. people are um have have difficulty um tracing down some of these bits so just to be yeah you can't you can't cut and paste from a video yeah i, I try tell 
I'm always trying to figure out how I can annotate my videos. <laughs> I just haven't mastered that part yet. So um, I think that's why. Not yet, at least, right? Yeah, I, I, I'm, lo I'm learning Camtasia. Camtasia is pretty good, but um, it's sort of the MS Paint of video editing. Um, but I, I think if, if Jamie, if you can create some, you know, a short, the short video and the recipe to go along with it, I will happily make the uh, and make a PR request to the OKD.io site. I and wherever you host it, um, if you look at the couple of examples that um, Charo did already for recipes, they're they're not hosted on in the OpenShift repo. They're hosted in his personal repo. I'm happy to link yeah, them to a Umish or your own personal repo as well. Yeah, it's in, it's in actually, uh, I think it's in a UMish repo, but I can put it in a UMish repo either way. And yeah, either, either way. Um, so other, other than that, um, and, and John, I might mute you a little bit because you've got some noise going on in the background. So oh, yeah, like, yeah, my you get, you're living a real life. Um, you've got real people in your house. Yeah, my grandson's in class, and he's in the same office. Yeah, that's great. Okay. Um, so, uh, if are there other things that are stopping you? I mean, uh, Walid, um, and I, this probably isn't a vSphere specific thing, but you mentioned that your management didn't want to deploy OKD yet. Is that just because it's um, hasn't been mature and stable for a while, or because it's the open source stuff, or what were the were were there any things that we can help with that? Uh, they are interested on the uh, on the operators, and I mentioned that, that uh, I cannot guarantee that all operators that will be one-to-one uh, -one availability in OKD as their OpenShift. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure about the Open Data Hub because I saw I saw that they have done some work on the uh, offline disconnected operator availability, but I haven't tested it yet also. And I'm not sure if it's available in OKD or not. I haven't I haven't played with OKD for the last uh, two or three months. Yeah. I, so I, there are, go ahead. to answer this point, there are two types of operators in OKD which you can install. So the first one is shipped right in our release payload, and release payload for OKD is exactly the same as it is for OCP, except some tweaks we need to do, for instance, machine config operator is slightly tweaked to work with Fedora Core OS, and samples operator is tweaked to ship uh, community samples. So that's the first part. These are identical, but some parts are slightly different because Fedora Core OS is slightly different than Arcos. And then there is optional operators, light by OLM. And here is the difference because uh, OKD is shipping with community operators enabled only, and OCP is shipping with both sources like Red Hat and the community available only. However, in OKD, if you have a valid full secret, you can enable both of them. We have this documented in uh, in FAQ. And well, yeah, that's the that's the difference. Um, these two sources are controlled by you. If you don't want to use uh, a pull secret from Red Hat, you will have just the community operators. If you know what you're doing and you have a valid pull secret, you can enable both sources. And there is no secret source which we hide somewhere in uh, in O2P. That's that, that's the story. Um, I would be more concerned about questions of support, but uh, there is not much we can do on OGD side. It's community supported and it's just not going to change ever. Uh, other than that, there shouldn't be any difference. If there is, it's a bug which we're about to fix, like uh, bare metal support, for instance. So when I use the Red Hat pull uh, secret, uh, I think I'm entitled only for two months or, or uh, or uh, I'm, I'm entitled for more? Um, so the answer is you, when you create an account, you will be given a, um, a temporary subscription, two months. 
but if you change it to self support later on you can still use it and you it doesn't break any kind of a clause as far as i know again officially it needs to go through legal but if you're using it for your personal sources certainly not going to going to bother anyone and if you're using it for testing it's definitely not going to be a threat but the problem is that uh the gray area here is that if you would run OKD with Red Hat's full secret and Red Hat's um, official supported operators on production, this is probably a gray area. You would need to clarify that with, uh, I don't know, with legal or somebody else. Um, I don't think anybody has tried that so far. Now the target is test and dev, so it should, I guess it should be fine, correct? Yeah. Yeah, it shouldn't be a problem. So I have a question, and I haven't I haven't been asked this by management yet, but I'm uh, I'm almost expecting it. Um, with with the announcement that um, Red Hat has made with CentOS and how they're changing CentOS, um, and you know the fact that you know there are a lot of people who are using CentOS in production and stuff like that, is there a concern, or should there be a concern that the same type of thing that could happen with OKD, um, you know, versus your regular OpenShift as CentOS versus RHEL. I think um, we, we, we're talking apples and oranges. That's um, what I think, but I, I just kind of want to hear it. Yeah, you, you can hear it from me. It may be Mandarin oranges even. Um, <laughs> it's, very, it's a very different um, relationship between the two products than um, RHEL is to CentOS and CentOS Stream is to, to RHEL. It might be closer to what OKD is to OpenShift. Um, in some ways. Um, we always talk about OKD as being the sim sibling um, uh, open source upstream, not quite upstream to um, OCP. So it is, the, the issue for us, I think, is that OKD lags behind um, OCP. And so if, and we've had this conversation at the last OKD working group, if you wanted to contribute to OpenShift and OKD, you're always kind of contributing to the prior release or trying, it, that, that's more of our, our issue rather than the, the CentOS um, relationship to RHEL um, issue. It's, it's, it's apples and oranges. It's not the same thing. You, you, you'll always have that. And go ahead, Jamie. So I, one of the things that I've been doing is I've been actually using it as an opportunity to promote um, Fedora Core OS and promote OKD. Um, basically, folks are saying, well, we've been using this um, in university setting for research uh, machines, for cluster nodes, et cetera. And so what I've been doing is uh, sort of pivoting on that and saying, well, if you have Fedora Core OS, you can run these things in containers and get that same sort of um, isolated functionality that researchers like for particular libraries, et cetera. And if you want to go the cluster route, instead of doing um, HPC stuff with CentOS nodes, you could actually do an OKD cluster with Fedora Core OS nodes and run MATLAB jobs, run like whatever it is that you want to do actually in containers. So I've actually been taking it as an opportunity and I'll, I'll uh, forward to um, the community email list, uh, an email that I sent out uh, about this last week that maybe can give folks some talking points uh, to promote that. That would Before be great. That might be fod fodder for my blog post, Jamie. <laughs> that might make me, make you co-author that blog post um, with me. So I think that that's, that is the position that, well, I, that, that says, I like about OKD. And then a lot of mine is 10 is 1. All right, I'm going to mute John again. Uh, or let you there is in. also another significant difference that uh, in OKD everything is controlled by the cluster itself and if you make an etcd snapshot you can revert back to whatever state you have and using RPM OS3 you can revert your post back to whatever state you have. So this is why we're not really bothering with publishing uh, versions of kernel and exact list of RPMs we're shipping in every OKD release. If you're hitting a problem, you probably should revert and we'll look into that later on. 
uh, that has hit us a lot during 4.5 to 4.6 upgrade, but that's how it works. We don't have to bother with uh, kernel API and stability things, which we do. We have CI, which ensures that. And if you're hitting a problem during upgrade, one of your masters may go broken, but we have ways how to revert it back to a stable position, report a bug, and move on. It's a little bit different than uh, single CentOS machine upgrading from one version to the other. So we're much more safer in this regard when we're having a full cluster. Agreed. I'm looking forward to that because upgrades of 3.10 and 3.11. Yeah, I'm also looking forward to that. Yeah. So, are so there folks, a... oh, go ahead to answer. No, no, I, I'm just was trying to move the conversation forward, so go for it. Okay, so uh, I'm throwing a uh, bug for Fedora Core OS in here because it it is it seems to affect. Check that out in the chat. It seems to affect uh, vSphere folks. Um, I've had it happen to me a couple times when sure. booting up nodes. So if you run into this, folks, when you're doing IPI or UPI, let me know. This is the uh, IO control uh, issue that pops up. And then sometimes if you reboot the node, it'll work fine or not. So this is going to be a showstopper for folks doing IPI or UPI uh, vSphere installs of OKD. So uh, I'm going to chime in on, on this. And if other folks um, run across it, definitely chime in on it. Um, and let's see if we can nail down what it is that's happening. Hmm, I haven't seen that. Happens to me, you know, I, you know, because I'm rebuilding my one test cluster a lot. It'll happen maybe on one node um, each time I do an OKD install. Uh, and so it happens uh, on that reboot, uh, basically, um, after the update. So. And that's on vSphere? Yeah. And if you reboot again, uh, it tends to be okay. I've had one where I had to reboot like three times and then the node finally booted properly. So I'll well, do some different. debugging next time it happens. Um, but I thought it was good that someone else had the same experience. And so I was kind of happy to see this. My day job is watching OCP upgrades, and we're seeing that's the scariest bug of all. We're seeing this symptom quite often on Rail as well, on across all of the platforms. The problem is that there is no way to extract any useful information from it. It's just kernel uh, breaking for whatever reason. Um, I think the smartest way would be. I don't think we can fetch any additional information from hypervisor, right? At least tracking the vSphere kernel relationship. There might because be. I can look into that. There. there might be, but I, I don't know. I haven't gone that deep into it. Uh, but I agree. Let's start with tracking it in Fedora CoS and see where it takes us, because I've seen it happening across all the platforms, including bare metal, uh, some system DUDF issue, which can happen due to a variety of hardware or hypervisor. Um, I'm not sure if it's a great idea to have one umbrella issue for everything, but um, that's at least a start. At least something we could point to other people and have a workaround that you just need to reboot it. Uh, it's pretty bad, but it's not like end of the world. Yeah, it's good if we just put something up and maybe the FAQs or something like that that just says, hey, if this happens, you know, reboot and you should be okay. Just because you don't want someone to think that they're dead in the water on an OKD install because of that. Yeah, probably that's a good idea. We should have a list of known issues. Um, I'm trying to keep a list of pinned issues in OKD updated, but uh, there's only three, and apparently OKD is becoming more and more widespread, so uh, we have many, many more. Um, yeah, having a list of known bugs which people actively hit every day 
probably a better idea than me trying to to find out how widespread each bug we get. So let's start with that. Yeah. Yeah, I think the the tough part is we need like uh, we need some sort of like living list, right? You know, that go that or or a list that can kind of live with each version release or whatever. Can we use the the projects page, um, the community projects page, as a way to to track those? I mean, so that we're not at least have a, a link to them. I can create in if that's uh, what what works best for you, Vadim, um, to see them and to review them. I don't want to create more issues. I just want to have a, in my mind, I just want to have a list of them that we have links to elsewhere. I think it, it would, a better idea would be a markdown list as a file in the repo so that we could control it. We could suggest changes and uh, it will be visible to anybody visiting GitHub OpenShift or Kitty. If you create an empty one, um, I will happily promote that or and promote it on the, the mailing list. I'll, I'll happily promote that theory at the, the next OKD working group and in between, um, if that works for folks. I, I just like my community page, an addiction to it. Um, other things, I know- You um, could we'll certainly put a link from the community page to the file oh. in the repo. Yeah, so that's in that first column of the community page, I would just put that in. Um, and I might put a, a column in that's vSphere specific to that community page so that we can link these notes if this meeting is going to be reoccurring, um, have a link to the, the working group notes. And I've put all the notes from today into the main OKD working group meeting. So this is not, so people will have visibility of it. Um, as a guest has just joined us, but that could be anybody. That's James. Hi, James. Um, I, Waleed, you said one thing in um, in passing really quickly that caught my attention. Um, ODH, um, Open Data Hub on OKD, and I do not know if we've tested it um, on o it, the deployment of Open Data Hub on OKD yet. So I will um, see if I can find someone in the ODH team to talk about that um, in an upcoming uh, working group or on the mailing list at least. Um, there is a, a Gchat internal channel for that. So someone, I, I would guess that someone has already done it, but I'm not sure whether they've done it on vSphere or what the configuration is. So I'll try and hook you up with that and maybe um, even do some sort of briefing on that because um, that would be a good thing. On January 28th, I'm doing a, um, OpenShift Commons gathering on um, data science um, and the Open Data Hub folks will be there um, in, in, in mass, shall we say. Um, so if you um, see that um, fly through your, your radar, that's a, a good place also to ask that question um, and to see, see what they're doing. And I'll try and get them to address that in their, um, their slide deck um, on their demos as well. Maybe I could even make them demo it on OKD, though that probably um, is a lot to ask as the Christmas holidays are coming up and I bet their demos are all fully baked already and they're off baking gingerbread instead. Um, yeah, I mean, the ODH should run on like 4.5 or 4.6 OKD. Like I, yeah. I don't, I follow, you know, I used to work on that stuff and now I kind of follow it at arm's reach. Um, but as long as the cluster is 4.5 or 4.6, I would imagine the ODH stuff would work, but I, I don't think they have a deep dependency on something coming out of the operator. That that would be the only issue. I would yeah, think. I, I I don't know. I I can't imagine. And I there's something tickling in the back of my brain that that somebody's already done a demo of ODH on OKD, and um, I have to look through the three or four hundred videos that we've recorded this past year and see if somebody did that already and, and get that to you if that helps move you forward. I know James is you just you. It, that that would help. I think that would be a good one. The other, um, I'm trying to think the other thing. Um, the other people um, that I'm going to try and get in here, but they're not running on vSphere. That's I was thinking about CERN. They're on OpenStack. So that's a different deployment. Uh, I don't think it matters the infrastructure. What matters at that time, it was uh, the latest version. I believe was 0.7, and until 0.7, the uh, 
the Open Data Hub was not supporting offline uh, restricted network uh, installation. Okay. So when you have, when you pull basically your operator uh, open Open Data Hub, you will not see you will not see uh, any actually artificial AI ML uh, operators at all there. Uh, but I saw there was a GitHub issue, and I saw that they, they started working on it. Okay. The target was 0.11, so I'm not sure which version they are right now. Well, if, if you can dig up the um, the GitHub issue and throw it in the chat, yes, I, I, can. I will track it down. And and James, uh, if you wanted, James Castle just joined, so if, if you have a vSphere specific, I, James, I know you're, I'm pretty sure you're a Red Hatter, um, so you probably just listening in, but um, we're making everybody introduce themselves, so if you want to do so, or if you don't have a microphone. Yeah. Nope, he doesn't want to introduce himself. That's okay, introverts are welcome. Um, and so there's, so um, we've got about we 12 minutes left. Are there other um, vSphere or even generic 4.6 questions you guys are having? Yeah, can I ask a couple of questions? Please. Uh, Dan? Yeah, so um, just because I seem to be, um, like I, I did, uh, I guess yesterday, uh, tee up the uh, upgrade from 4.5 to 4.6 and uh, uh, went through, uh, actually I did it from the console and I didn't have any trouble with the, uh, I didn't have to force it or anything. It just, you know, started right away, no problem. Uh, and uh, it went, uh, you know, relatively through updated anything. The machine config ones seem to always be at the end. And then it will go back and do a lot of networking things uh, at the same time. Uh, and uh, the, uh, everything was going smoothly until the very end where um, one of the uh, worker nodes uh, uh, was, uh, you know, having massive CPU to the point of where I got an alarm on vSphere on it. Uh, and uh, the net result was that uh, that one worker node uh, failed the upgrade. And uh, uh, when I, when I looked uh Later on, it had an OVS configuration service failure. Uh, so that's okay. Uh, it, uh, then the net result was that uh, I wind up with uh, uh, three control plane and five compute. Uh, and uh, all of them are, are uh, you know, successfully upgraded except for the one compute, which is now ready, scheduling disabled. Okay, so that seems reasonable. Uh, and then, uh, but subsequent to that, then all, then uh, uh, my cluster operators had all been uh, available. But uh, at this point, the uh, authentication console, image registry, monitoring, and API server are all unavailable. And so I have no console and uh, uh the i can't get it into the machine from outside the only thing that uh works at the moment is with the uh the original uh admin key uh, uh and uh, i can get into it from uh a machine that's on the cluster and uh i would have i guess hoped that if that uh losing one worker node wouldn't have such a big impact, uh, especially since it's managed to realize that it shouldn't uh, schedule it. Uh, you know, so I, I would have thought that everything else would be up and, and running fine, uh, but that wasn't the case. Yeah, I don't think it's related. The worker nodes should not block the upgrade. In fact, the worker node upgrades happens right after the right. upgrade is complete. Um, there is an odd issue with OpenShift API server, which is critical, I think. Let me find it. Yeah, 
Yeah, so 395. Um, this one may bring down a lot of operators, and it's usually because OpenShift API server gets stuck for some reason. Um, I don't think it has a workaround right now, but it certainly affects OCP as well. So I suggest we could we could start with filing a bug to OKD. Uh We need must gather, which is probably, I don't know, hopefully you'll be able to collect it. Uh, well, not, I just did click, I just, I just did click one uh, yeah. and uh, I was just looking at, I was doing it while we were, we were talking and uh, it, you know, there were a number of, of services that weren't available as it was going through, uh, but it did gather a lot of stuff it looks like in, in retrospect. So yeah, so I have a must gather. Cool. Um, if you could have a look into details of OpenShift API server, if it still throws 503, for everything, that's probably the bug we're talking about. And uh, in the must gather? Yeah, it should be somewhere in namespaces. Uh, OpenShift. Okay, I've never looked at like Wait, wait, wait. Or, uh, or you okay, can just so... send it to me. We would have a look. Oh, no, I'm happy to look. Uh, so in the uh, the Quay OpenShift must gather folder, uh, let me just go there, I suppose. Uh, and then, so, okay, so I've got namespaces, you said? Uh -huh. uh, the the namespaces name. folder. Okay, and then 50,000 of those, and then you want the uh, OpenShift API server one or server operator? So, so which, uh, the API need, server or operator? We need the API server, yeah. And then yeah. we would have pods. And in okay, so every, yeah. we should have three pods there. In, in each of those, we would have containers called OpenShift API server, OpenShift API server. So eventually we will reach the logs, and the current log okay. is what we need. Okay, and so I need to go down to pods. And so I got three pods, yes, API servers. So pick one. Yeah, I think it would flag every single one of them. Okay. And so I've got, so inside of one of the uh, API server pods, then I've got Oh, I see two. Okay, the so API server, something YAML, fix audit permissions, OpenShift API server, OpenShift API server check endpoints. Uh, so, so I'm in one of the pods, where, where should I go next? Uh, there should be a folder called OpenShift API server, and it yes. should also have a child called OpenShift API server. And deep in one of those, there would be a current.log, which is the log okay. of your, of the spot. And there's a logs. Yeah. Okay, great. And then current log, previous and secure log, previous log. So you want current log? No, wait. That's all. Pardon? There should be, yeah, current, right. Um, yeah. Uh, and if it ends okay. with something like, Transport closing. Okay, so tail, yeah. a second. Mm -hmm. I, I, I did uh, more and I got 0%. Uh, okay, so let's see. So then it's transport is closing. Uh, before that, handle sub con state change. And switching balancer to pick first. And then earlier, there's transports closing. And yeah. I'm just That's looking. Cool. So what should I look for? I think it looks very similar to what we have in the bug 395. 
unfortunately, I don't know what else to collect. We need some input from API server team. So there is a link to Bugzilla, which is tracking the OCP side of this bug. I think we should drop a, yeah, this link. Um, we need to command there and uh, attach the must gather and mention that it started happening on 4.6. Okay, so um, attach to the uh, bugzilla bug? Yeah. Well, good. I put I put most of the links that we've talked about today in the meeting notes too. So if you're you're scrambling or want to back references, uh, let's see. Okay, SSO. Ooh. Okay, so SSO developers Red Hat that should work, right? Uh, no, not that one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, too many passwords. many passwords oh uh, ne never enough just use the same password everywhere right okay so, so we have a few minutes left is there anything else that folks want to bring up before we uh disband while he's doing that uh yeah so well i i, I can update the once i figure out how to log into bugzilla again which i hardly ever do uh i, I can uh um well, I, I guess because I'll, I'll have to update, I'll have to push the must gather somewhere so that I can link it to Mozilla, so that's not instantaneous. Um, so at, at the uh, uh, now, w from the other chat, what it sounded like, it might be worth rebooting the worker node just to see what happens. But it sounds like that is unlikely to change anything. Um, so I should just wait, yeah. or. Since it's happening on OpenShift API server, it runs on masters. So workers are just a symptom of the problem. Um, right, right. We could give a master reboot a try, but again, I haven't seen any workaround or any more information to to come up with something. That that's really a puzzling bug. I was just wondering, in terms of workarounds, do you still have that one worker that's causing you problems? Like, is that is that one worker still in a weird state or whatever? Yeah, it's it's uh, sitting back on the uh, July kernel and hasn't, you know, it's it's not upgraded. Yeah, because uh, I would think was, was, you should be able to delete that machine from the machine set and let let the machine API create a new machine for you. It, you should be okay to delete it. It'll it'll drain and evacuate that node for you, and then it'll create a new node at the right level. So, I mean, it's not a great workaround, but it's an easy workaround. So, well, let, uh, how, how do you how do you mean let it recreate it? Uh, like it's not. So I'm not. Rec you're not creating any machines because this is UPI. Right, right. So you already have a, you are, you have a worker node, right? That's in a bad state right now, but the cluster still has that worker right. node attached to right. a machine set, right? Like so, oh, it still correct. thinks the. Oh, so you For could sure. get the machine sure. object, you know, from the OpenShift machine API namespace, and then you could right. delete that machine object. And right, what right. will happen is right. the machine API will try to recreate the machine for you, and it would just create a new one at the same level that the machine set is set for. So it would create one that fits the machine set, basically. Right. Okay. Okay. All right, folks, we're, we're at the top of the hour. Um, and it sounds like this was, was useful um, to do. Um, uh, and, and so if we want to do another one sometime, maybe quarterly or something like that, vSphere specific, or when the need arises, I'm happy to do that, especially on the opposite week of the actual working group. This fits into my time slot um, to host. Um, if you have other questions, um, I'll post the video and the links and the notes into the, uh, the Google group uh, probably later today. 
Um, I've got to catch up on a couple of other videos from working groups, so I'm behind, I think, two now. Um, so we'll get that going. But if there's anything, if this was useful, was that useful to everybody to, to do this? Um, there weren't as many vSphere people as I thought coming to the fun. forefront, um, a lot of the usual suspects. So um, <laughs> other than Gudrun, who I, um, I don't think I've heard her speak up before, so I'm happy to have you here. Um, and we'll we'll do it again, um, as needed. How's that? Yeah, please please keep me in the loop, Diane. Yeah, happy to help out. Yeah, that would be cool. And uh, well, well sh I'm going to share this with the the PMs, a couple of PMs, Maria Bracco and um, Andrew Sullivan as well, so they can listen in to our chatter, and hopefully move some some of the other vSphere customers forward too. So thanks for your input today. Yeah, I mean, if this if this becomes popular, I wonder if we might, you know, we might think about just having like an OKD provider office hour. People yeah. could just come and ask provider questions or something or bring yeah. up their issue. I mean, we probably don't need one for every provider, but like a general session just about provider topics would probably be worthwhile. Yeah, no, I think I think you're right. Um, there's there's something to this. Um, so we'll talk about it again. <laughs> at the next OKD working group and see um, if we want to have like a subgroup or something, a reoccurring meeting, but I'm um, happy to do so. So thanks again, everybody, for joining. And if I don't see you again, have a great holiday break. And um, now I've got my notification. After, yeah, hey, James, welcome to my world. Time's, time changes. Um, so <laughs> I, you, you should have been me like three weeks ago when it first changed. I missed, I think, two meetings in a row with the wrong time. So, um, but luckily Charo chimed in and covered my, covered for me. So don't feel bad. Anyways, um, if this becomes a reoccurring one, we'll put it in the Fedora calendar. So thanks everybody um, and take care. Thanks, Diane. Thanks. Thanks, Vadim. Thanks, Vadim.